There you go. Give her hell, honey. So we're going to take the boat out. You got a new boat, you're going to take it out and you don't know what you need. What do you need to take your boat out for a day on the water? So what I like to do, I bring my book bag. I, I got a designated book bag that I take out my boat with. I've also got a designated toolbox that I take my boat out with. I'm going to kind of show you some of my key things that I bring out with me that helps me out every time I go. I don't even take this stuff out. My toolbox, all this stuff stays in my toolbox and all my tools stay in my workshop. Depending on what kind of boat you got, it really kind of varies from boat to boat, but always bring you some speed grease out. Any kind of marine grease, dynamite, grim reaser, always have your grease, okay? So your second thing you need, for sure, is your hatch tape, okay? You're gonna need your spanner wrenches. That's to get your collet off your boat with. All right, uh, you notice I have tape on there. All right, that's for my Delta Force and my Blackjack 24. This is for my Blackjack 42. Uh, this one right here is for my little, my rigger. So what I do is I tape, if you have more than one boat, I just kind of color code them. And I tape every all my spanners so it's easy to find. Boom, you're done. Just look for the color. I usually keep a socket for my my uh, prop nut on a wrench. I like to use this guy right here. Once you get it broke loose, you can just roll it right out. And then this is for adjusting my struts. Pretty much all my struts are the same except for one of my boats. So I'll, I just keep two of them in my thing with the sockets already on it, basically ready to go. Um, you need a flex driver in case you run into a loose nut and a hard to get place hard to get to place on the boat you know back here or, or, or somewhere like that and I always keep my, all the all the little pieces for it in here all right so I, I use that and then I always keep these little small Allen wrenches all right uh, I don't put drill bit, bits in my box, but I do keep this stepped bit in case uh, something clogs up and I need to like kind of on the fly drill it out. I keep that in my box. All my Allens, I kind of keep right here. Electrical tape and heat shrink is a good thing to keep in your box. This right here is very, it's almost invaluable to me. I have big fingers and it's hard for me to get into tight places to get velcro straps loose so i use this pick my velcro strap and pull it off so i use this thing right here almost every time i take my boat out all right it's a little pick tool uh, then i keep my big big uh, allen drivers you know my the most common what three two and a half three four millimeter um, in my box i keep a set of extra batteries in my box always I keep some extra shafts in here. Oh, well, I had a fix cable in here. Oh. Well, I must have took it out. <laughs> anyway, I keep these little wires in case I run into something like it in my uh, in my cooling, and I get something stuck in my cooling. I've had stuff get stuck in the rudder, and I keep a like a long straight wire I could stick in there to get uh, that debris out of my rudder. All right. I, I keep these little small screwdrivers, like eyeglass screwdrivers almost. This is an Allen, but I have a whole set of these I keep in here. Um, and then I just keep a few other odd wrenches, which I really don't even use those. I don't even know I have them in here. A round file. I keep a couple of adapters. This is a swag. I use this a lot, 
especially since I've gotten this new blackjack, I use this sometimes to and tap my my drive shaft out. We want to keep a, a lighter. Keep our little roll of solder. Just roll it up. My propeller balancer. Well, I guess we can't forget our propellers, can we? What are we gonna do without our propellers? So I'll just kind of throw my propeller on. If I hadn't used one in a while, I'll just check it for balance, especially if I got some high voltage going through it. Temperature gun always comes in handy, especially if you're trying new props. If you don't have a temp gun, I suggest getting a temp gun. This thing right here, I think it was 10 bucks at Walmart. It works pretty good, all right? And this right here is a battery checker, battery tester. You just plug it into the balance lead. It tells you what your battery voltage is. I bring this with me everywhere I go. Basically, that's what I carry in my, in my box, and it all fits in this little storage container. You know, it's pretty, I got this at like a Dollar Tree or something, a Dollar General a file. I keep a flat file and a round file in there. Keep your grease in your box or your book bag. This is a, like a, I'll suck up grease in this and a couple of my boats have easy grease fittings. Uh, that's invaluable. Hatch tape. I usually have two or three. I, I need to actually get some more, but I always keep hatch tape in here. And this is actually a bunch of fittings. I've got extra collets in here, um, drive dogs, 2.5, 3, and 4 millimeter nuts, bolts in here, washers. Um, if you have breakaway rudders, use or you use a breakaway rudder, get yourself some nylon breakaway nuts so that if you hit something in the water, you're not going to have to go home because you broke a nut. Um, I don't suggest putting a steel or stainless steel nut on. I would definitely use your nylon breakaways if you can. Like I said, I always keep my heat shrink in there. It's something to cut with. So, uh, so that's basically my to-go box, my boat box. That's all the things I keep in my bag. Um, if I'm doing speed runs, I will, I'm actually charging up my GPS. I always bring my GPS. I have Ziploc bags so my GPS don't get messed up. Uh, no, uh, I'm not a drug dealer. It's just empty bags for my GPS. <laughs> Always good to have a screw extractor, large and small, in your box. I like to have rubber bands. I like having zip ties around. So I always keep rubber bands and zip ties in my, my boat bag as well. So uh, that's basically everything you guys need to go out. Have a fun day of uh, tinker testing and tuning on your RC boat. You know, just go out and have you some fun. Spend a few hours out there running your boats, tinkering with them. See what you guys can get out of it. And, uh, you know, that way you don't have to pack it up if you don't have the right screwdriver or the right, or you break a solder and a solder joint comes unsoldered. You have some solder and you don't have to come home like I did the other day because you broke a solder on one of your connectors. And you can't forget your handy dandy homemade prop puller. Use battery adapters for any of your boats. Keep a spare in your box. That will help you out in case you forget it or leave it at home. If you're like me or like forgetful like a woman, you will uh, always leave something at home. <laughs> uh, no offense to any of the ladies out there. It's just something I always say messing around with my wife. Uh, so yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, you can't forget your remote. Use rubber bands to mark my remotes. Uh, this is my wife's purple boat. I got a purple rubber band on it. This is for my rigger. It's a white boat, white rubber band. This is for the 24 blackjack. Uh, couldn't find a red rubber band, but I got black rubber bands on it. I know which one it is. This is for my Delta Force. It's like a yellow orange boat. Got the yellow rubber band on it. Uh, orange for my blackjack 42. Just put that rubber band on today. So that's how I kind of color code my remotes so I know which one is which. Um, I also do it for my trucks. Let me brush this motor box. I put a piece of foam in here for my propellers with a little like stainless steel rod sticking out of the foam to hold my props all in place. And I just kind of, like I said, I like rubber bands. So I just rubber band it together so that my props don't fall out when we're traveling. I'll throw that in my book bag like so. Uh, batteries go on the side so that they're easy to get to. And this is the one thing I forget the most. 
paper towels or a rag of some sort to dry your boat off when you're putting your hatch tape on. I always forget my paper towels. It's like, to me, that might be the most important thing. <laughs> Need a recovery boat. I use a Black to Jack 24 for my recovery boat. If you don't have a recovery boat, uh, keep you a, a rod and reel in your car or you just bring it out every time you, you take your RC boat out. This is everything I bring out with me. Kind of lay it out so I can work on my boats, adjust the struts, adjust the trim tabs, and uh, basically just have a good time out here. I got the Blackjack 24 and the 42. Basically, you're going to use the 24 for a recovery boat. Uh, actually, well, I'm actually trying out a new propeller I got for this 24. I just got done balancing it. I hadn't polished it yet, but this is a very high pitch propeller. I wanted to try out. Hopefully, it don't blow my electronics up. Have to adjust the strut a little bit. Yeah, she's running too wet. So once we get that prop polished up, I bet it'll do better. Way better. Electronics are hot with that propeller on it. Really hot. Let's see. Woo, 95, hottest this boat's ever been. 93. So, 27, 27 miles an hour. Got the uh, print thrift propeller on here. I just got done balancing, polishing it. Plug my battery in on my recovery boat. Basically, I have my remote on. All I have to do is turn the switch on and put the cowling on. Um, that way if I flip my boat, it kind of be ready to go. I don't have to scramble putting batteries in. Um, <coughs> all right. So we got the Pranther 270 on. How about that, where I hit that duck? Look at that. Oh, man. <coughs> Steering's reversed. Oh, wow, man. I sharpened that prop up. It's actually do it nice oh yeah I added a second cooling tube also run oh runs good on 6s 8s it wants to blow over real bad This, this pond's the only, it's the closest pond to my house. So I'm gonna try to get us a little speed pass in with this Prancer 260, see what it'll do. Oh, don't tell me I lost that prop. Oh man. Trying to get the video ready for you guys uh kind of telling you what you need to do what you need to bring to go out on boating and i think i might have forgot to tighten down my collar all the way so this is why you need a recovery boat <laughs> oh two boats I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. Oh, I hope I didn't lose my propeller shaft. Ooh, thank God. So I threw my my recovery boat in to get my big boat and I didn't have it turned on. 
<laughs> oh boy. Let's see if we got a broken cable. Oh, my grub screw came out. Let's go put a grub screw in. This is a perfect example of why you need extra parts in your in your book bag. So I should have a grub screw for this. Any other time I'd have to go home to get a grub screw and then come all the way back out. There we go. Look at there. A little bit long, but it will do. It needs a flat. All right. So this is why I bring files too. So you see how this one's tapered? You see how the end of that's tapered? Well, we got the boat open. We'll see what uh, what kind of speed we had. Damn, 50 miles an hour. Damn, 50 miles an hour in that little area. You gotta break out the fishing pole sometimes and catch a catch a RC boat. All right, get over here. I usually just use like a little flat sinker or any type of heavy sinker so it goes down to the bottom and uh, you can basically pull your boat in instead of waiting for the wind to bring it in. All right, come here, you little guy. Sometimes it pays to be prepared, and even that isn't enough. <laughs> TFL 438. Ooh. Oh, that's nice. Oh, man, that's nice. Pretty out here. I think the stock crop might be faster. Yeah, I was gonna get you guys a video today. I uh, wanted to do the 42, but the Blackjack 24G will do just fine. Oh my gosh, so <laughs> my battery's dead in my remote. All right, so I'm glad I brought batteries. Let's, uh, let's put some batteries in. This is why it always pays to be prepared. I can't get this boat to turn on. You hear it beeping? And I don't think this propeller would over overheat it. It was, uh, what, 90? 90 degrees? Um, that propeller is actually small for this boat. Um, can't get the ESC to turn on now so um, change the batteries out in the remote and I just get a beep 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 so we're gonna go home and diagnose the problem so yeah yeah this is a this is this blackjack it's it's all stock I mean everything stock about it even the cooling stock I hadn't even touched anything it's basically my wife's bow I got it for her but this is pro future project overkill <laughs> we're gonna do something with it later on but uh, let's throw a battery in it and see what see what it does see if we can figure it out Yeah, so uh, it's the servo. It's just the servo. Most racket I've got out of it since. But so basically, at the pond, it was the ESC was blinking. Beep, beep, beep. And now that I have it home, my servo is making noise. Let's see if it. All right, so the servo is not doing anything. 
All right, so let's turn it off, see what's going on. All right, so see if we have throttle, no throttle. Trims are set right. All right, let's uh, no steering, servos hooked up. Let's unplug this. Oh, okay. All right, so <laughs> it was, uh, I guess the servo gap is bad. I, I don't know. I, maybe I should have waterproofed it with some Corrosion X. <laughs> you would think they'd put a waterproof servo in the boat, but really the, it wasn't even wet. Well, I didn't even dump the boat out. Let's see how much water was in here. Uh, <laughs> a drop or two. So we're just gonna change the servo out. I got this old Savox that I had to replace the uh, RX wire on. We'll throw that in there. It's Corrosion X. This thing's probably two years old. <laughs> we'll use it. But uh, but yeah, you never know. You never know. Always be, always come prepared. You never know. <laughs> you never know. Well, I I definitely don't keep servos with with me in my boat bag, but <laughs> you never know. All right, so let's go over to the Blackjack 42. All right, so so the Blackjack 42, the uh, the drive dog actually, I had just just shot that last video about an hour, and I had put a Loctite in it. Didn't give it long enough to sit up. Maybe I didn't have it tight. I was kind of you know kind of ready to go take the boat out. I actually changed out my drive dog. All right, tapered drive dog shouldn't create any resistance any heat on my bushing and i'm going to use this one this is what i'm going to use from now on well well i guess uh i guess we're going to call it a day it just wasn't a good day for big b on the water and it happens it happens to the best of us it don't matter how prepared you are uh it some days are better than others so uh, thank you guys for watching i know this video was kind of kind of uh, silly but uh, those of you getting into the hobby just know that things happen and uh, sometimes there's nothing you can do about it uh, we came prepared we had our batteries we had our extra double A's for the remote sometimes those go dead we had all the tools we had all the replacement parts uh, sometimes it just it meant to be I guess but thank you guys for watching ironclad RC a channel where we tinker test and bomb <laughs> everything rc don't forget to like comment and subscribe to the channel uh, ring that bell to get notified for future builds future projects as always thank you guys for watching